We are getting in tonight new video and survivor testimony, giving us a clearer picture of what happened and when in the early minutes of that Hamas invasion, specifically at the site of a music festival where nearly 260 people were killed, according to Israeli first responders. Recent terror attacks on Israel have captured the attention of everyone. We know that Israel has got a special place in the end of days. Whether we talk about it geopolitically or religiously, Israel is going to play a crucial role in the end times. With biblical prophecies and with the situation that it's in right now, it seems like that the time has come much closer to the prophecies. The prophecy of Gog and Magog is about to begin, and that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. So here we go. In many church teachings and Bible studies, the prophecy concerning Gog and Magog, as described in the books of Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39, is a topic of much discussion and interest. The prophecy speaks of a great battle that will take place in the end of times, involving various nations against the nation of Israel. The land of Magog is often associated with the Northern Territories, and many Bible scholars believe that this could refer to modern-day Russia. Gog, on the other hand, is described as the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. While these ancient times are not directly equivalent to current nations, they do provide clues. Meshech and Tubal are often linked to regions within modern Turkey. Iran, known in ancient times as Persia, is explicitly mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 38 verse 5, indicating its role in the end time coalition. Additionally, many believe that when the Bible refers to Put, it could be pointing to regions in North Africa, possibly Libya. The situation with Palestine is more nuanced. Historically, the land that Israel occupies today was once called Palestine. The ongoing conflict between Israelis and Palestinians could be a precursor or a sign of the tensions that the Bible predicts will escalate in the end times. Now, regarding Israel's role in this prophecy, it's clear that Israel will be the target of this vast coalition. Yet, the Lord promises that he will be with Israel. Ezekiel chapter 38 verse 28 through 23 describes how the Lord will display his power and ensure that Israel emerges victorious. The victory will be so profound that all nations will recognize the hand of the Lord in Israel's deliverance. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7 Alas, the day is so great there is none like it. It is a time of distress for Jacob, yet he shall be saved out of it. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict is nothing but a deep struggle. It's a kind of struggle that is entwined with historical and religious narratives that have affected its trajectory for decades. The territory of historical and theological significance to both Jewish and Palestinian people is at the heart of this dispute. With its promise of Canaan to Abraham's descendants, the Bible plays a critical role. This land reflects the biblical promised land, where their forefathers resided after their departure from Egypt. It's the spiritual home of biblical figures such as Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and King David. But the recent attacks on Israel have sparked up another fight between the two countries. After Hamas terrorists launched thousands of rockets into Israel and gunmen entered southern Israel, an intense battle erupted in Israel and Gaza. The attacks were so sudden that the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had to declare that Israel is at war. The violence may be the worst since 2021, but it's part of a complicated, violent history that dates back to World War I. The conflict dates back to pre-biblical times. Palestinian territories used to be what is now Israel, Gaza, and the West Bank, albeit their borders have varied throughout time. However, within a short time, Israeli forces launched a response that was codenamed Operation Iron Swords. On October 9th, the Israeli army cut off Gaza's access to electricity, food, and water. At the time of writing, over 1,200 Israelis, 1,100 militants, and Gaza residents had been killed and over 5,000 had been injured. Egypt is under pressure to welcome Palestinian refugees and create a safe corridor for them to leave the Gaza Strip. The photographs and videos that have emerged on the internet are horrifying. Some of them depicted a young mother with two small daughters kidnapped, young people murdered while attending a peace music festival, civilians soaked in blood with their wrists chained behind their backs, terrorists holding up a naked German woman on the back of a pickup truck. The chaos and loss of life here is a tragedy and not just a potentially worrying indicator of escalation. Unfortunately, Christians have not consistently attempted to address this conflict. There is a known movement that has campaigned to support the Jewish nation of Israel's sovereignty and entitlement to the territory. This will undoubtedly become more of a matter of discussion in the coming weeks and months. Some prominent public personalities have already expressed their support for Israel, while others have waved the Palestinian flag.
The treatment of Palestinians by Israeli soldiers, particularly those living in the occupied West Bank, has fueled much of the international hostility. Today, Israel administers the West Bank under an uneasy deal with the Palestinian Liberation Organization, or PLO. However, this was not always the case. Following the Arab-Israeli War of 1948, Jordan acquired it in 1950, and it continued Jordanian until 1967, when it was seized by Israel following the Six-Day War. This has resulted in international sympathy for Arab countries, particularly the Palestinians living in the West Bank and Gaza. But whatever the situation might be, it can be said for sure that these events which are now unfolding truly indicate to something that could happen in the future, especially ones indicated by the Bible. And given the real-world implications that are currently being felt in the region, it's more crucial than ever that our discussion of this subject is founded on good theology and a faithful understanding of the Bible. Gaza is mentioned over 20 times in the Bible. Gaza is mentioned for the first time in Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 20 through 23. Later, in Joshua chapter 10, verse 41, we read that Joshua's conquest conquered Gaza. According to Judges chapter 1, verse 18 through 19, Judah's realm encompassed Gaza. The Midianites destroyed Gaza when Israel did ill in the eyes of the Lord, or Yahweh, as recorded in Judges chapter 6, verse 1 through 4. Gaza is historically and prophetically significant in the Bible. It was a place Samson went, where he met a woman he liked and possibly lost his eyes and was imprisoned. Both Solomon's and Hezekiah's reigns included Gaza. Acts chapter 8 verse 26 lists Gaza as the location where Philip encountered the Ethiopian eunuch. Jeremiah chapter 25 verse 17 through 29 has a prophecy concerning a disaster that will destroy Gaza and provides a warning from the Lord. Amos chapter 1 verse 6 through 8. For three transgressions of Gaza, and for four, I will not turn away its punishment, because they took the whole captivity to deliver them up to Edom. But I will send a fire upon the wall of Gaza, which shall devour its palaces. I will cut off the inhabitant from Ashdod, and the one who holds the scepter from Ashkelon. I will turn my hand against Ekron, and the remnant of the Philistines shall perish, says the Lord God. The Bible's end-time prophecy for Gaza is bleak. While some of these predictions may have already been realized, there is a duality in their fulfillment, implying that similar occurrences may occur in the near future. However, the primary focus of Bible prophecy is Israel. Considering Israel's prior reliance on the Iron Dome anti-missile defense system, current occurrences suggest that this security mechanism may eventually collapse, increasing Israel's vulnerability and probable catastrophe. Isaiah chapter 22, verse 8 through 9. He removed the protection of Judah. You looked in that day to the armor of the house of the forest. You also saw the damage to the city of David, that it was great. And you gathered together the waters of the lower pool. The tribe of Judah currently constitutes the majority of the nation known as Israel. Jerusalem is the city of David. As we can see, God will gradually withdraw his protection from Israel, and Bible prophecy will continue to be fulfilled. Jesus Christ also foresaw the demise of Jerusalem many years ago. Luke chapter 21, verse 20 through 24. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, let those who are in the midst of her depart, and let not those who are in the country enter her. For these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe to those who are pregnant, and to those who are nursing babies in those days. For there will be great distress in the land and wrath upon these people, and they will fall by the edge of the sword, and be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. So undoubtedly, Jerusalem will fall into the hands of the Gentiles once more. And truly, we are living in a time where there is an increasing magnitude of conflict in the Middle East. Now the current events show the continuation of the occupation and the loss of any peace process. The diminishing possibility of a two-state solution are pushing the region into a catastrophic conflict or, at the very least, recurring outbreaks of terrible violence. But the God Almighty has promised in the book that these times will end and there will be a time when the people of God will see peace and comfort. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 24 through 28 I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart, and a new spirit I will put within you. 
And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. You shall dwell in the land that I gave your fathers and you shall be my people and I will be your God. While we see some signs and geopolitical movements today that seem to align with Ezekiel's prophecy, it's essential for believers to remain vigilant, prayful, and rooted in the word of God. We must always remember that God is in control and his promises to his chosen people will surely come to pass. As the church, our role is to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and to be watchful for the Lord's return. Let us know what your thoughts are on this in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's video, then make sure to like the video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to keep up with the most amazing content. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.